We're going to discuss the case of Penny Lane, the woman who dared speak her mind to the TriMet Fair inspector who then decided he was going to give her an exclusion for doing that. And before we get into the details of that case, it's pretty widely known how I feel about the fair inspections. I find them oppressive, tyrannical. The police state mentality of the whole thing bothers me hugely. The fact that everybody at TriMet makes good livings with good benefits while they prey on people of modest means, and everybody that's riding the TriMet system is of modest means. There's nobody riding that system that's wealthy, I guarantee you. Uh, so you're, you're preying on people that are lower or middle class people, and the fact that the fine is ridiculously high, $175 fine for a $2.50 ticket is, is what I call usury, and it's predatory. So there's a million reasons why I have problems with the fair inspections, and um, that's, that's not a secret. I also have a problem with the fact that TriMet hired dozens of these people to go around doing this. While TriMet is complaining about their, their union employee costs and benefits, they certainly haven't stopped hiring people or promoting people. They continue to, uh, to do this, and uh, I, there's very little doubt in my mind that these fair inspections are actually cost ineffective in terms of how much money TriMet puts out to have these fair inspectors roaming the system and how much they get back from the clientele who are riding TriMet. I'm sure they're not making any money on this. I'm sure that this has got to be a loss to them because even if they, may, even if they successfully cite the people, a lot of them don't pay, as you can see. If you listen to the dispatch like I do, you see how many repeat offenders there are. They just don't pay the tickets, and they don't show up to the hearings. And the ones that do, do show up get them uh, either community service or cut in half. So it's not a cost-effective system that TriMet's using here. So it leads you to the next question as to why are they doing it. And we're not really sure why they're doing it. I mean, it's not succeeding. They haven't reduced the fare uh, evasion. I mean, it's as pervasive as ever. The uh, the repeat offenders are continue to repeat, and uh, the whole the whole system is is really awful. I mean, I, it's one of the reasons I would never ride if if I had to uh, because of that. It's oppressive. Who wants to be checked all the time? Okay, nobody. Now, in the case of Penny Lane, uh, she uh, spoke up against this perceived tyranny, and. Uh, Personally, when I saw her video, I was just like, yeah, lady, I mean, really, this, you don't see this kind of boldness much anymore. This, you, you see, most people are very timid about getting involved or speaking up against authority, but here she is uh, speaking right up against this authority, and I, for one, really thought it was one of the greatest moments in TriMet history, to be honest with you. So let's watch what she did here. Steven, people, people are working hard all day and you're here to hassle them? That is ridiculous and no. you should be ashamed of yourself. No. You should be ashamed of yourself. No, dude, like, no. Now, did you see what just transpired there? I, I mean, it's very clear what transpired. She was lecturing him on the ethics of what he's doing. I mean... And I think that's a very legitimate, uh, a very legitimate article. Uh, uh, you know, it's like I'm questioning your ethics and you doing your job, and because she questioned his ethics and in him doing that job, he immediately said, "I want to see your ID." So as soon as she questioned his ethics, he said, "Let me see your ID." In other words, he had already decided in his mind that he was going to give her some kind of a official TriMet citation. And all she did was question his ethics, okay? She did not she did not say anything else. She didn't yell at him. She didn't make a disturb. She was questioning his ethics. And he reacted by saying, okay, give me your ID. Let's watch a little bit more. We're not going to watch all of this again. We're just going to watch these, these parts. I'll give you my name. You don't need to see my ID. I have the right to, I have the right to refuse my papers to you. Now, look at what he's holding in his hand in that last scene. You see, he's holding her valid fare in his hand. He's He's got the valid fare in his hand. So he's aware that she has valid fare, but now he's pressing the whole, I'm going to give you a ticket for questioning my ethics. So this is, this is very clear what's happening here. He is giving her a ticket because she questioned his ethics. 
There's no disturbance. There's no disruption. There's no scene going on. Everybody's getting where they're going. I have the right to refuse my papers to you. I have, I have you on camera so you can go ahead and smile. I have the right to refuse my papers to you. It's in the Constitution, and I will abide by that. And you should too. All right, well, we see that uh, at this point, it's pretty much all downhill from here for for, for Miss Penny Lane, excuse me, I'm having problems with my setup here as usual. Uh, it's all downhill from here. He's, he's adamant that he's going to give her this ticket, and um, what, he, what he's going to do is uh, give her this citation for, we have the... Uh, the section of the code, just try that code. He's going to try to get away with the excessive noise clause, which states, uh, "No person shall make excessive or unnecessary noise, including boisterous and unreasonably loud conduct within any district vehicle or district station with the intent to cause inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm to the public." Person, let me start over with that. Make excessive or unnecessary noise, including boisterous, unreasonably loud conduct with any district vehicle or district station with the intent to cause inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm to the public, district personnel, peace officer, or, or with reckless disregard thereof. So he's going to cite her for that. And um, was there, was that reckless? Was, I would say not. Was that, was that something that impeded his job? I would say not. But at the same time, we have precedents here. Unfortunately, for her, her big problem is that there's precedence here, and that was Bricker versus TriMet, uh, where Larry, good old Big Bird Larry, uh, gave her a, a cite for the same exact thing because she was objecting to somebody getting a citation, and he did the same thing. He got a, uh, she got a 30-day exclusion. Now, Joe Rose wrote some stories about that, uh, and his last story was that he headlined it, a federal judge saw no reason to overrule the ruling. He, he, didn't, he got that wrong, actually. I read that case, and the reason why the federal judge didn't overrule it, because the exclusion had already passed, okay? The, the time for the exclusion of Bricker was over, okay? The 30 days had ended, so there was no, it was moot, basically. So they didn't. There was no reason to overrule it because it was over. There's nothing. To, there's nothing to overrule. Um, but up to that point, it was upheld. So she's dealing with a system that has upheld this kind of thing before. Now she does have the audio tape of this. So you know, I think that's a pretty good evidence that she was just expressing herself and trying to express her constitutional uh, protections and. She wasn't just doing this to annoy him and disrupt him. You know, you think of most people screaming and yelling they don't want to pay the fare or, you know, unreasonably. She was actually expressing herself within the confines of what she thinks is constitutional protections. But there, we're on TriMet, and TriMet is not the government. See, they set up TriMet specifically so they could get around all the rules that that regulate government employees. That's including the TriMet employees, the people on TriMet. It, as you know, TriMet has no accountability like a regular government agency. It's in this little twilight zone of, of uh, government, which is not government. And so we have this here. So I personally think she's got a good case because she has the tape. If she didn't have the tape, I don't think she'd have any kids. She would lose immediately because they're going to always side with these people. They they generally uh, they generally will support these fair inspectors and and the public needs to know when you're on TriMet you are riding a fascist system stop deluding yourself and thinking there's a, a constitution there isn't you're riding a fascist system you violate their rule they'll throw you out you don't they don't like what you say they'll throw you out or they'll give you a, if you don't have a ticket they can fine you if they don't like the way you're acting they can exclude you you see how they have that. And it's the most ridiculous bullshit thing I've ever seen. And I'm surprised anybody rides TriMet, really. I think it's the, one of the most obscene systems I've ever seen anywhere is the way they run this place.